And hello there, Employment Law Show here, set to go, ready once more. John Scholes and Lior Samfira coming up to the show today. Severance packages, what you need to know. Stick around for that. Trust me, it's a very, very important topic. We'll get to that. Get to some of the phone calls from our long-running radio show. Anytime you want to find a source for the radio show near you, employmentlawyer.ca, and you can go there to catch past television shows of this nature as well. Pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, that's a good place to start as far as contact is concerned. I know Lior will get into that. A little more deeply as the show continues here, but uh, pal, we always start with the week that was. What is happening in your world? Hey, John, a busy week as always for me. Spoke with a lot of people, people that watched the show over the past uh, week or so, and they had some questions, so that's great. I'm so happy. That's why we're here to do this show. I don't expect that this show will answer all your questions. I expect that it will get you thinking about your legal rights, your legal options if you have a workplace prom. So if you are in that situation and we didn't cover your exact situation, not a problem, give me a call, send me an email, we'll give you my contact information throughout the show so that we can connect privately, discuss it and solve that problem. The law is quite good when it comes to employment law. In fact, in Canada, the law is really terrific and comprehensive when it comes to protecting individuals and employee rights. So if you're ever in a situation where you're not sure what the law does for you and what your legal rights are, let me know. Maybe it's a situation where you lost your job. Maybe your job has changed. Maybe your boss did or said something and you want to know, hey, is this right? Is my boss allowed to do this? There's no such thing as a bad question. Reach out. I promise you there's an answer and a solution. Uh, and to get us kind of started and rolling on today's show, John, let me tell you about the situation that came ac across my desk over the past week. I spoke with a lady who had unfortunately been the victim of some, for some time at work of bullying. So it was a co-worker of hers that was bullying, that was mistreating her, uh, and uh, it, it got bad, you know, to the point where every day there was something else, and she, she felt demeaned, uh, it started impacting her health, she had to take uh, some days off to get better, she, she was taking some medication for anxiety and stress. Well, finally she did the right thing, and she spoke to her employer. And she told her employer, listen, I, I can't do this anymore. This co-worker of mine sees me as a, as a joke and bullies me and, and demeans me constantly. Can you please do something about it? Uh, so HR person says, sure, yeah, we'll, we'll look into it. Well, what she found out later is that the owner of the company and this individual are very close friends, and nothing was done, nothing. In fact, it got worse. This person probably heard that she said something and realized she, had no, she couldn't do anything, so started harassing her worse. Literally at her wit's end, she calls me and she wants to know, what do I do here? I don't want to go to work anymore. I can't do this anymore. The, the company's not helping me. What are my rights? Well, John, it's a fundamental right that we all have to work in a harassment-free work environment. There's no exceptions to that. We all have that right, and it's our employer's duty and obligation to enforce that right, to protect us, to make sure that our work environment is safe and healthy. This employer dropped the ball. They had the opportunity to fix that problem. They didn't. They broke the law by not taking it seriously, by not fixing the problem. So what does this mean for her? It means that now we can get her out of there. Now she doesn't have to go back to work, but it's not a resignation, it's a termination. And she's going to be owed severance, potentially some other damages as well because of the company's bad treatment. And I wanted to mention this to you as well because you unfortunately may find yourself in that situation. You, you're being bullied, harassed, mistreated. If there's no remedy for you internally within the company, let's talk. Let's get you out of there so you don't have to go on a disability leave, so you don't have to seek medical attention. Let's get you the compensation that you're owed so that you can move on to a job where you'll be treated better. No one should continue being a victim of harassment. Do try to do what she did. In most cases, that will be just fine. Try to give the company the opportunity to fix that problem. Keep a record of it. If that doesn't work, you reach out to me and I'll take care of it. Different kinds of ways to reach out, of course. The phone number which pops up in your screen all the time and employmentlawyer.ca is the website. That is also where you can go to catch our long-running radio show. We uh, get a ton of calls every week on all the radio shows. We play them back here and we, uh, we, we talk about them. We get into them a little deeper. So uh, call number one for the day. Lior's coming up right now. I've been in, employed for almost 20 years now, and I've been temporarily laid off. I was wondering if I take a layoff and I go back to work, and in the future, if I'm laid off again and then permanently closed, will I receive my initial severance package from that? Or am I allowed to take my severance package now? That, that's an extremely good question, an important question, especially now when we have so many people off on temporary layoffs. So let's start by, the, by talking about the fact that a temporary layoff in most situations is illegal. It's not something an employer is allowed to do. 
And what I mean when I say it's illegal is that it gives the employee the right to treat it as a termination now and pursue severance right now today. They don't have to wait and see what happens. If they choose, they could treat that as a termination. So this lady in, the, in that call asked us, can I get my severance right now? The answer to that is absolutely yes, you can if you choose to. Now, the other part of the question, a bit more, uh, more interesting here, very important for everyone to know is this, is, well, if I don't do that, if I accept the layoff and at some point I go back to work, what happens if I get laid off again? Well, here's the problem. If you accept this layoff, that, which is otherwise an illegal layoff, but you accept it because you want to be the good soldier, which I understand, by doing that, you're giving the company the right to do it again in the future. And the second time they do it, the third, the fourth, the fifth time they do it, there's not going to be an opportunity for you to do anything about it. You only have one opportunity to deal with a temporary layoff, to treat that as a termination. So you may find out that your reality now is this. You go to work for a few months, you get laid off for a few months, and round and round we go. That's not a very good way to work or to live. So that is a problem. That's why you have to really consider whether you're going to accept that temporary layoff. At a minimum, at a bare minimum, if you're going to accept it, Tell your employer in writing, well, you know what, employer, I'm going to accept it, but just so you know, I'm not agreeing to any future layoffs. I know this is a unique situation, so I'll be the good soldier now, but I am not agreeing to future layoffs. That may at least give you some measure of protection. You know, as it relates to COVID-19, though, and she does uh, choose to pursue severance, would it be enhanced because you'd, you'd assume there'd be a bottleneck of people looking for work at, at some point, more people unemployed, it'd be tougher to get a job, if not longer, right? One of the factors that goes into determining how much severance you're owed is how long is it going to take you to find another job? Well, when the economy is good, lots of jobs, that may impact your severance. But when the economy is not good, when unemployment rate is high, when it's going to take you a long time to find another job, that's going to actually increase your severance. So these days, with the unemployment rate being very high, unfortunately, if you lose your job, not only do you get severance, that actually means you get more severance than you normally would because it's going to take you longer to find another job. That's why it's so, so important not to ever ever sign off on that severance letter without getting that legal advice first. And there's tons of advice in that regard, by the way, at pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, an amazing website, very robust, tons of information there, absolutely free. It's anonymous, but you can reach out from there if you want to. If not, you just close your browser and you walk away. Nobody knows you were ever there. But from pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, I want to get to an email from Samar. Samar says, uh, I lost my regional sales job after six years with a mid-sized company. My base salary was $30,000, though I usually made $60,000 after commissions. My employer gave me 10 weeks pay as severance but calculated using my base only. This doesn't seem right. It's not right. It's not even close to being right. So when it comes to severance, okay, your full compensation has to be accounted for. So salary, bonus, commissions, car allowance, uh, any other perks that you would have received, benefits, etc. So it's not just your base salary. So a company is not going to forget about your base salary when it comes to severance, but what about the other components of your compensation? In most cases, in most cases, they're not going to do that. So... Remember, if you're now getting paid 10 weeks of base salary, but it should be 10 weeks based on your full comp, that could mean tens of thousands of dollars. So right off the bat, remember, all components of compensation have to be factored in. But it's not just 10 weeks. In most cases, and certainly in this case, it would be more. Pocketemploymentlawyer.ca will tell you exactly how much you would get if you lost your job, how many weeks pay, how, it'll help you calculate the actual dollar amount. It's easy and it's free and it's anonymous. So if you lost your job, you want to know if it's appropriate, they told me this is good, my neighbor told me it's fine, but I'm not sure, don't wonder anymore, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca is the place to go to. You know, you cannot stress the importance of this next segment. That is key things to know about a severance package. So stick around for that. Cannot stress it. You're going to want to know all this. As we move into a short break here, it's 1-855-829-5900. And you want to go to employmentlawyer.ca. And we've got lots more of the Employment Law Show on the way. Don't go anywhere. You lost your job. They only gave you two weeks of severance per year worked. But where can you find out what you're really owed? I'm going to severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you're owed right now. SeverancePayCalculator.com You've been denied long-term disability. You think you're powerless, but you have a lot more power than you think. I'll tell you a secret. It's a numbers game for the insurance company. They're betting on you walking away from money that they owe you. Don't make that mistake. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. 
Call Savannah and his team, 1-855-821-5900 or go to disabilityrights.ca. You lost your job. They said they had a good reason, but you think you've been wrongfully dismissed. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. And welcome back, Employment Law Show. John Scholes and Lior Sanfiro, 1 855 821 5900. Important things to know about severance packages. This is, I, I said it before we went to a break, couldn't stress how important this is. You got to remember this stuff, and that is why you watch the show every week. Number one, Lior, is there a difference between a severance package and, or severance pay and termination pay? So this is where a lot of people get confused and, and a lot of people uh, are, are worried about the different amounts where get termination pay, severance pay. So let me simplify it. It does not matter, okay? When, we come, when we're talking about severance, what we're talking about, the amount of compensation that you're owed if you lost your job. Yes, in some situations, there's, there's differences between termination and severance. It actually really doesn't matter. All you have to remember is how much am I owed if I lost my job? How many weeks, how many months pay? That's what we refer to as severance. Some people call that pay in lieu of notice, termination pay, severance pay. It does not matter. That's why it's, it's easy and unnecessary to get hung up on the, the definition of it when it's really about the compensation that you're owed. That's all that matters. So no, there really is no difference. When I talk here about, hey, your severance should be this or that, I'm talking about the month's pay that you are owed if you lost your job. That's all it is. Pocketemploymentlawyer.ca has the severance pay calculator embedded in it to allow you to find out how much you're owed. So some people think, well, wait a second, do I only get termination and not severance? Forget about it. It does not matter. It's a, it's, it's a way to confuse you for no, unne for no necessary reason. Severance really is the term that we use globally for all that payment. Well, that, uh, that dovetails nicely into the second question, which is arguably the biggest one. If I am getting a severance package, how big should it be? That is the main question. Well, okay, fine. I lost my job. What am I actually owed? And, and, and how is it calculated? So a lot of people will tell you, if you ask some people on the street, well, I know it's a week per year of service. If you ask another guy, he'll tell you it's just two weeks. Some other guy will tell you it's two weeks per year of service. Well, guess what? They're all wrong. This is one place where you don't go to a Google University to find out uh, your legal rights. There's too much at stake. So your severance is calculated based on a number of factors. The main factors are your age, your position, and the length of your employment. The longer you work, the older you are, and the more senior a position you have, the more severance is owed to you. So it's not a week pay or two weeks pay. And remember, short service employees are treated disproportionately better than long service employees. Usually, severance starts at about two months and can be as much as 24 months pay. And that's not me saying that. That's the law says that. The courts have said that over this, the past 150 years. So that's why it's so important to understand. And most people, John, when they look at that severance offer, the amount offered in it is significantly less. That's why you can always call me, but if it's uh, midnight on a Saturday and I'm not picking up the phone, you just go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Works just as well. If it's midnight on Saturday, I'm still calling you, just so you know. But I'm not picking up, especially <laughs> not for you. We're talking about the key things you need to know about a severance package. If someone has, if they have an employment agreement, how would that affect that? So in some situations, an employer may try to limit the severance that you're owed in an employment agreement. They may have a term there that says, if we ever let you go, we're only going to pay you this much. So employers can try to do that. And in some cases, if it's drafted properly, they may be able to limit your severance. Now, in most cases, though, the good news is even if you have a term in the agreement that tries to limit your entitlements, it's actually not enforceable. There's many reasons why it would all end up being not enforceable. But the reason I'm bringing this up here is just because you may have signed an agreement that appears to limit your severance does not mean that it actually does. In 80 or 90 percent of cases, it does not limit your entitlements. And that dovetails into another point that we should, uh, we should make, and that is this, that you are better off as an employee not to have an employment agreement, to start a job on a handshake or with an email, much better. Because that employment agreement, that 10-page document, can have many things in it that could potentially be very problematic for you, that could cost you a lot of money, such as future severance. But if you did sign an employment agreement, it may limit your entitlements, but chances are it does not. Send me a copy. Let me look at it. Let me tell you if it does impact you or not. Don't ever assume that it does. 
Can an employer force an employee to sign off at a severance package by a deadline? The old, you know, Friday afternoon at 5, we need it back. I've said this before. Every severance letter has a deadline. Friday, Monday, Tuesday, whatever that deadline is. And, and when you see it, you, you feel, wait a second, my employer's offered to pay me a certain amount of money, but if I don't sign, I'm not going to get it. Well, nonsense. Remember, the law decides how much your legal rights uh, are and, and what you're owed. And your legal rights don't expire Friday. You have two years to pursue those legal rights. Now, if your employer was offering you more severance than what you're actually owed, yeah, you'd probably want to sign it on time before they change their mind. But John, I've been doing this for going on 20 years, and I have yet to see severance packages that are better than what they need to be. So that's not going to happen. In fact, in most cases, the vast majority, the, the amount you're offered is significantly less than what you're actually owed. So think about it, you're offered less than what you're owed and told to accept this lesser amount by the deadline or else. No, thanks, but no thanks. You'll get the amount that you're properly owed and whether it's Friday or Monday or next month, it does not matter. You can ignore that deadline because your legal rights don't expire on that deadline. You know, sometimes it would be the natural reaction, and this is the next question, that if I think my severance uh, package is a, a wee bit on the low side, I would normally reach out to, like, the Employment Standards Branch or the Ministry of Labor. Good, good idea or bad idea? The Employment Standards Branch, the Ministry of Labor, cannot help an employee get their full severance. It can only help you get a small portion of it. So it is a, a complete and total and utter waste of time to contact the Ministry of Labor. You may, you may be in a situation where you've worked for the company for... 20 years, Ministry of Labor can help you get eight weeks pay. Eight weeks pay, that's it. You may be owed 24 months pay. Ministry of Labor, Employment Standards Branch cannot help you. They can only help you enforce your minimum entitlements, not your full entitlements. And it get, gets worse. In some situations, just by f filing that application or that complaint with the government, with the Employment Standards Branch, you may then be barred from pursuing your full entitlements. Bad, bad situation to be in. I've seen that more times than I can ever hope to, to remember, and I don't want to see that again. So if you lost your job, if you don't like me, that's okay. Speak to another employment lawyer. But what you cannot do, what you cannot do is contact the Employment Standards Act, the, uh, the Ministry of Labor, because you will not be able to get the help that you need. And in fact, you may compromise your rights just by doing that. We're talking about the key things you need to know when it comes to severance packages. And the last one I'll throw out at you is this, and this often comes when employers are dealing with them, and you hear this from employers like, oh, he was let go for a good reason, so we don't owe him severance. Right, and, and this is a very important distinction that we need to make. Yeah. The only time your employer can let you go without severance is if they have what we call just cause. Now, just cause is very difficult to establish. The only time an employer will have just cause to let you go i.e. without severance, is if you've done something so bad that it's just impossible to continue employing you. You stole, you hit someone, you committed fraud. Uh, if you did that, yeah, then there's likely cause to let you go. But the fact that you may have done something wrong, or maybe you've done a few things wrong, does not mean that there's cause, that there's just cause to let you go. Meaning, if your employer still wants to let you go, yeah, that's fine, but they'll have to pay you severance. Think about it like the, the life in prison or the death penalty. Well, life in prison is for the worst offenders. Just because you may have done something wrong doesn't mean you get life in prison. There's many other penalties that are available. What's well, the same thing with the termination for cause? Termination for cause is the, is the death sentence, if you will, of the employment relationship, which means it's only for the worst offenders. So if you've done something but it doesn't quite rise to the level of just cause, then you cannot be let go without severance. I've seen that often in most cases when the company says, no, no, we're letting you go for cause. We're not paying you severance. In fact, John, that's a wrongful dismissal. Reaching out is easy. Employmentlawyer.ca is a good way to do that. That is where you can find our radio shows across the country as well. Tune in for those every week. We'll get call number two from the radio show right now. I'm just calling on behalf of my husband. He had been an employee at a company for 10 and a half years, and about 10 months ago, he had reported his district manager to HR just regarding a violation of policies and harassment and such. And ever since then, he was kind of singled out and targeted. And then just recently, last week, he got a notice saying, Kate, you're being temporarily laid off. We're just kind of wondering what our employees employment rights are. 
Well, John, it certainly seems like the temporary layoff is a punishment yeah. because he had the audacity to complain about being mistreated, that they're, they're singling him out because of that. Now, that's illegal. Your employer cannot punish you for raising a harassment issue or another workplace concern. We call that a reprisal. A reprisal is a situation simply where you're being punished for standing up for your rights, and that is illegal. Your employer cannot do that. They, you cannot be mistreated, you cannot be punished, you cannot be let, let go or laid off temporarily because of the fact that you've stood up for your legal rights. Never. You should always have the confidence and the comfort to know that if you're standing up for your legal rights, that's okay, you're protected. So in this particular situation, if he's being picked on and laid off, that's a, temp, that's a termination. By mistreating him, by laying him off temporarily, by coming up with excuses not to treat him properly when the real reason, reason is he filed a complaint, that is a termination. So not only can he get severance and get out of that poison work environment, there'll be additional damages because of that reprisal, because of the company doing something illegal. That's wrong. If you're ever in that situation, you should know the law protects you and allows you to, to complain, to talk about your rights. Maybe you're concerned about your overtime and you're saying, employee, why aren't you paying me overtime or your vacation pay? Or maybe it's a harassment issue, like in that case. Either way, you have the right to complain, to ask questions, to get information, to get answers, and you cannot be punished in any way for doing that. We'll take a short break. A reminder as well, employmentlawyer.ca, that is where we get the phone calls from our long-running radio shows. You can go there and find a station near you that carries the show, and we'll get to another call from that after the break. Stick around. You were being harassed, and when you said something about it, you're the one who lost your job. Now what are you going to do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. Insurance companies deny long-term disability claims all the time. They give lots of excuses. Don't give up. I've seen it all. They've ignored your doctors. They've ignored you. You're angry and you're frustrated. But there's hope. We resolve disability claims all the time. We force insurers to pay what they owe. We're in your corner. Call Savannah and his team, 1-855-821-5900, or go to disabilityrights.ca. You thought you had a secure job. You didn't see it coming. Now what do you do? I'm going to employmentlawyer.ca. Always check with the employment lawyer first at employmentlawyer.ca. All right, welcome back. Employment Law Show. Yeah, that's the number, 1-855-821-5900. EmploymentLawyer.ca is the website. And as I mentioned, keep mentioning, you go there, you want to find a radio show close to you where you can tune into the show every week and get more of this, the audio version anyway, without seeing our lovely mugs. Uh, we take phone calls from the show playing back. I believe it's number, number three is coming right up, Lior. So I got laid off. Our company was bought by a U.S. company, and they decided to close shop in Canada, and they're moving the jobs to the U.S. So we got our notice. So still getting paid for the month, still doing work for the company in the transition. Can I go back now because of the COVID situation and renegotiate, even though I've already signed the papers? How long have you worked there for? Uh, two years. Wow. Uh, you know, I, I, I hate, hate getting these types of questions. I really do, and, and oftentimes uh, I, I get them frequently and here's the thing if you've agreed and accepted your severance offer your termination package what, what whatever you want to call it you can't go back and renegotiate even if you realize wait a second that was a bad deal or wait a second my circumstances have changed unfortunately you cannot so this person is getting a few weeks notice that his job is going away and he accepted that unfortunately he's stuck now he could have been owed six months pay uh, maybe even more than that, depending on, uh, on a number of factors. But now, just because of the fact that he's accepted, he now has to, to know that instead of a month's pay, uh, he should have gotten six months' pay, and there's nothing that he can do about that. Please don't let that happen to you, okay? And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. I'm not trying to be self-serving. If you don't think that I can help you, talk to someone else. That's okay. But what you cannot do is absolutely, you can never just sign off on that severance letter without getting that advice. Because if you do, you'll find out later when it's too late that you're stuck, that you, you walked away from entitlements that legally you had. And I, I'm not saying you're having them. I'm saying the law says you have those entitlements. It doesn't matter what I think. It matters what the law says. So please don't give up your rights. And again, if you want to know what your rights are, if you're an employee or an independent contract and you want to know what you are, if you want to know if you've been constructively dismissed, if you want to know if your case is 
is considered harassment. If you want to know what your severance package should be, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. It's like having an employment lawyer with you on your phone 24-7 for free all the time. So check out pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. And a side note to that one, Leo, somebody like this gentleman working for an American company on Canadian soil, Canadian laws apply. A lot of people don't know that, right? That is su such an important question. You're right. You may be working for a company that's based in the U.S. or even somewhere uh, overseas in Asia or in Europe. It does not matter. If you work in Canada, the province in which you work in, those are the laws that apply to you. And pretty much every, every province in, uh, in Canada other than Quebec has the same employment laws when it comes to severance and overtime and harassment, etc. So it doesn't matter what the laws are where the company is based. It does not matter at all. Thankfully, in the U.S., uh, the, the employment laws are not very good. So thankfully in Canada, our laws are much better. And what matters are the laws of Canada, the province that you work in. That's all that matters. Terminationquestions.com. That's another place for you to ask your questions. Another resource. I want to quickly get to a, uh, a note from Terminationquestions.com. This one from Josh. Josh says, uh, my employer just laid off half our staff and has given their duties to those of us who remain. This has doubled my workload. I'm already beginning to crack under the pressure, but my boss is threatening to fire me with two weeks severance pay if I can't keep up. That's nice. So... A common constructive dismissal situation, a common illegal situation, is where you're doing the same job but your pay has been cut. And yeah, that, that would be something illegal that your employer can't do. But it also works the other way. You're getting paid the same, but your workload is doubled. That's just as improper and just as illegal. If your, if your employment has changed, your job that you had is no longer the, the, the job that you have right now, that's something that you have the right to treat as a constructive dismissal. Maybe your pay is the same, but the job has changed. That is also something that leads to a constructive dismissal, meaning that, okay, you can accept that new reality and continue working. Now, in this case, the person is doing double the work. Okay, that's their right to accept, of course. Or they can treat that as a termination. That's not a resignation. They're not walking away from their rights or even from their job. They can treat that as a termination and get severance. Your job may, be, uh, may have changed. Your pay may have been the same. It's still a constructive dismissal. And by the way, as I mentioned before, on pocketemploymentlawyer.ca, we have a tool that allows you to find out if you've been constructively dismissed. If you're not sure, is this change allowed? Can they do this? Can they not? Don't wonder anymore. Just go to pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. Would there be a time limit for this person if they accepted this and, and did that double workload for the same pay for a month, two months, six months? When is it too late? Or is it? So I said that you have, a, you, you have a right to treat that as a termination. But in some situations, you like to say, you know, you can take it for a spin. Uh, we want to find, I, I'm not sure if I like this change, but let me try it out. Yeah, you do have the ability to try it out. Usually it's for a few weeks, two, three weeks. Anything longer than that, you're going to be considered to have accepted this change and now you're stuck. So if you want to try the change, well, you, you told me I'm going to do this job. Maybe I hate it, maybe I don't. Let me try it. You can try it for a short period of time. Also tell your employer, by the way, in writing, email works great, saying, employer, I don't know how I feel about this change. I may not be okay with it, but I'm going to try it for the next couple of weeks. Make sure your employer is not uh, under the misapprehension that you've accepted it for good, that you're just trying it. Yes, you can try it, but only for a short period of time, and you should tell your employer that that's what you're doing. For our uh, new viewers that have just joined the show, maybe in the last couple shows, some final thoughts as we get down to the last minute here, pal. What do you think? What you, you know, John, we have new viewers all the time, and, and we have new people that have uh, watched the show or listened to our radio shows uh, for the first time. Remember, laws, employment laws are quite good. They're comprehensive. They, they protect you. They help you ensure that your legal rights are enforced. But the law can't help you if you don't give it the chance to do so. That's why we're here to inform you and educate you about those legal rights. So... We can't cover everything on this show, so we, we try to cover as much as possible. Every week we'll be here informing you. But if you want to know more, more about your legal rights, your specific situation, maybe you think your situation is unique and you need answers, there's always an answer. Just call me, just email, happy to chat. I will ne never yell at anyone, and I'll give you all the information that I can. There's all different kind of ways to reach out. First, the phone number, 1-855-821-5900. Help at employmentlawyer.ca is the email address. Just employmentlawyer.ca. That is where you can catch the radio show and past shows of this, this nature, the TV show. And, of course, pocketemploymentlawyer.ca. What a huge website that is. So much information there as well. Free, anonymous, use it anytime. And we'll catch you next time on the Employment Law Show. Closed captioning of this program is brought to you in part by severancepaycalculator.com. Find out how much you are owed right now. severancepaycalculator.com.